Hey, this is Notzer, and today's video, I am discussing the fire duration nerf coming to the Azuma and the Alaska, and, you know, why? Why are they doing it? The game in the background is myself in the Tier 10 Premium Japanese Cruiser Azuma. I am using my Zao Commander, and I am using my first impression build. You know, nothing's changed there. But what has changed is apparently the Azuma and the Alaska are getting nerfed. I don't know why they're getting nerfed, but their fire duration is going from base of 45 seconds to a base of 60 seconds. Very Battleship-esque. And honestly, I think it's justified. Based on playing the Azuma, the Alaska, they're very effective. I can easily get over 100,000 every single game. I still have the concealment and the maneuverability to operate somewhere in between a battleship, so I have that advantage as well. If you're considering something like the Alaska or the Stalingrad, they still have that utility that is so desperate for cruisers, and yet they still operate very much like battleships. So I don't know why this justification didn't just go global. Why didn't they just change all their battle cruisers to have a 60 second duration on their fire? The Alaska started out life with a 30 second duration fire, and it's been extended all the way up to 60. And I, I think that's fine. We're looking at a ship class that is pretty rare. You know, we've only got a couple in the game, probably five or six total, that have this type of play style. And they seem to be taking over the high tier. It's great that there's a lot of interest in playing them, you know, for maybe their premium income or their premium gameplay. But let's be real, Wargaming. They are not being played just for their premium gameplay. They're being played because they straight up are probably the best gameplay that you can pick in competitive or ranked or whatever. Yeah, sure, they don't dominate random. But that's because random is just dominated with a ton of tasks that everyone has to do. I just don't see battle cruisers having a lot of play in random. They're they're they are just they're wonderful. They're absolutely wonderful. But there's just so much everyone needs to do. They're probably not going to waste their time playing the same ship over and over and over in random. They're going to probably use random to get all of their unlocks and their their missions done and that is artificially covering up just the appeal that these ships have, whereas in competitive, boy, competitive players, they don't give a crap. They don't care a ounce if grinding out this ship is, you know, 1% better. They will go for the 1%. They want that. And they are definitely doing that. You know, Stalingrad is everywhere. And how can you blame that? It's really effective. It forces the enemy to basically have a counter pick in order to really effectively deal with it. Otherwise, you're investing a ton, right? So I, I really like the change. I just would like it globally. I think these ships do need to dr be dropped in their effective fighting. I think that competitive should not be dominated by them, and I fear that competitive is going to be dominated by them. Now, that could all change with aircraft. They could have just terrible AA protection. I mean, the Kronstadt, the Stalingrad, and the Azuma have okay AA protection. It's not the best, but it's there. And the CV rework obviously is going to impact the pick rate of this. I feel like this is a targeted nerf, pre-nerf, before these ships are introduced into competitive and otherwise. I don't think Wargaming likes seeing so many battle cruisers in competitive, and I don't like it either. There should always be a vulnerability built into a design, and I don't really see that vulnerability quite like I do with a cruiser or a battleship. You know, I was lobbying for a faster rudder shift, but if I do that, then it's easier to dodge and take less damage, and then it's probably going to be picked more. Probably the biggest confusion of all this is just the lack of a global change. We got a global nerf to the ability of stealth firing back in the day, and that changed a lot of balance. But, you know, it ended up creating a lot of 
different designs that could exist. Whereas with still firing, you know, you pretty much could do that with DDs and American DDs. Why would you need different types of DDs if you could freely fire and take zero damage, right? So I feel like this is the same thing. This needs to occur to maintain a balanced impression of all these ships. You know, there's a lot of value in a battle cruiser that doesn't take up a battleship slot. And there's always going to be value if Wargaming intends to always have limitations on class pick. If limitations on class pick is something that Wargaming is completely comfortable with, and oh yeah, that, that shot, ugh. If that is something that Wargaming wants to keep, then I think this needs to be implemented globally. And I think this needs to be just the trade-off that you have to take. Yeah, it's a cruiser. It takes up a cruiser slot, but it acts very similar to a battleship. Both good and bad. And I don't know that that discourages enough people from not picking it. So, you know, do it for the Stalingrad. Do it for the Kronstadt. Give this weakness some teeth so I don't feel so guilty seeing all of the Stalingrads just being played constantly and competitive and just the constant memes about it. It's like, we get it. It's a very powerful ship. And it's very easy to obtain now. But if it's a very powerful ship, it should be easy to obtain, or at least reasonable to obtain. I would hate for a very powerful ship to only be available to, you know, 1% of the population. That's really dangerous. So I'm just, I'm really confused by the decision to only nerf the Alaska and the Azuma in this regard. I would love to hear more explanation, but when I go over to the developer blog post, you know, I get more information will be posted soon, or they, they haven't worded it the way that I expected. I expect them to, you know, these ships are overperforming, we want to bring them down slightly. That sounds exactly what you would say for the Stalingrad. It's probably not a slight overperformance, though, with the Stalingrad. <laughs> it's probably way overperforming. And, um, could definitely see that. Definitely see that. Uh, it's just, it's, it's the way the game is right now. I think Wargaming is sort of struggling with the identity that they want to develop. And honestly, who can say what the identity is going to be? In a month's span, we could have a completely different world. You know, where the duration of fire, yeah, it lasts 60 seconds. But I'm getting focused down by aircraft so much, it doesn't really matter how long these things last, right? Huge, huge, huge change to be implemented in concert with the aircraft carriers. The literal dotting menace of the game, and we implement a dot duration nerf right before we're about to introduce what Wargaming have admitted is a very, a very unbalanced version of the game. We will have to change the balance of the aircraft carrier. It is not going to be good, one way or the other. So it's just, uh, I want the CV rework to be the focus. And I'm sure Wargaming would love it to be the express focus and the written consent, of course, of Wargaming and its uh, basketball operations. But it's not something <laughs> that uh, they probably realistically can do. They can't just not release or work on Azuma, Alaska, and all these different designs alongside the CV rework. You know, so maybe these battle cruisers get through in their effectiveness, and for six months or a year, they're just super powerful or super high value. I fear that that's the road we're going down. They just offer too much value for competitive, and you would be a fool to avoid that. And I know there's a million things that could change, but I just, it's very weird to be this specific when there's other battle cruisers that operate very loosely and freely in the world they're trying to avoid. Plus, CV Rework, they are a dot class. The reworked CV is a dot class. Damage over time. I, You know, I always have funny conversations with people like, dot, 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 what are you talking about? Damage over time. Oh, you're looking at this as if it's like an RPG in a game. 
because I am. Whereas players who come from it, you know, from a historical standpoint, they look at it as it's not a damage over time. It's not a dot. It's just fire on a ship. Everyone knows what a fire on a ship means or a flood on the ship. I, I, I get that. But this is just, just a weird change right before a huge change. And it's a, it's a half measure change to a class that, you know, is really probably too popular. So leave in the comments what you think about the Alaska and the Azuma specifically getting this targeted nerf. Do you feel like only the Alaska and the Azuma are justified in this change? I know you've probably only watched videos of these two ships, but they're really good. They're very good. Everything that is good about them will always be good. They've got a larger than average gun caliber with a faster than average rate of fire on a platform that is tankier than the average cruiser. It's every dream for a player that, you know, maybe a battleship offers a little too much tankability and too tanky, too slow, you know, the reload and everything. It's a unique play style that's only offered up here at high tier. And unfortunately, since it's only offered up here at high tier, it has a lot of impact on the play of high tier. And I, I personally feel like it's too impactful. These class, these ships, they should not be this represented. You know, maybe a token battlecruiser on every team is fine. But not like three or four. No, nothing that would say, oh, well, nothing else exists other than this ship. And I think we are in that world right now. Wargaming, you need to try and make the Battlecruiser a little bit more balanced with every other class. There's just a little too much value there in the current design of the game. And I just want to see the game grow continuously and grow into the game I know it can be. It can be that competitive online multiplayer game with a lot of depth, both in the captain skills, both in the consumables and the ship design. So I, I know that this can exist. I just want Wargaming to fully embrace this balanced, fun world that we're all hoping for. And boy, is it up in the air. I'm really afraid of all the changes being implemented in the next 30 days. It's a lot of change. And I'm going to be here to cover it. The only thing I'll say is that I'm going away for about a week to see my girlfriend's family for the holidays. I won't be here to react to any any new statement that Wargaming makes. Now, Wargaming did say that we're gonna be off for the first week of January, and that's not really a bad deal for you. You know, both myself and the Wargaming office in St. Petersburg are basically gonna be off at the same time. I'm gonna have pre-scheduled videos that'll come out, probably be user replays and also a good or funny replay from me. And then when I come back, we'll be recharged, ready to go to cover the CV rework, which will be extensive. Very extensive. And it'll be something that we'll have to consider. So all of these changes, implementations, they could all go by the wayside, you know? A dot change, right before a dot class is reintroduced in the game, let's be real, CVs don't exist as their dot class anymore. You know, they've moved over to the AP Alpha and the Torpedo Alpha, but they're going to have to come back. And when they come back, is a duration change really necessary? I think we're going to all deal with a lot of dots, and there's a lot of concerns. I've, I've made all my concerns public. I, I just don't know why this change is happening right now, other than they're in testing and they can just... Maybe hotfix this adjustment and the testers can leave feedback. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on all of this. And, you know, in the comments, let me know. I will absolutely read them. And if I can reply back, of course. In this game, the Azuma definitely did work. I really enjoy it. The platform itself is very cool. And, you know, the same goes for the Alaska. So these are two ships that are not going to have any trouble being popular. They'll, they'll always be popular. So, you know, I really want the battlecruisers to exist alongside of all the other ships and not just dominate high-tier competitive. The game itself was great. Hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, we had to come back. 
it was definitely one of those situations where I got a nice broad flank fire on a lot of enemy ships and we were just delivered just tons of damage love the Azuma love the Alaska I can't wait for them to come out but you know let me know let me know what you think about all this I hope you enjoy the game I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time